This demo is going to illustrate Transmagic's Magic Surface Repair Tool Set uh, in an intermediate context. What we're going to do here is go to File Open. Note that on Windows 7 machine our files are now under C Users Public Documents Transmagic Sample Files. On Windows XP this is C Documents and Settings All Users Public Documents and uh, you may need to change your folder view to show hidden folders for Windows XP. In this case, though, we're going to load up IGIS Sample 3. Notice how, uh, in this particular case, Auto Repair had not been run automatically. That's because in the settings area, I have turned Auto Repair off during file load. Um, this is an option you have with Transmagic to run this uh, automatically or turn this off and run it when you wish. I personally like to look at the data first and see what I'm dealing with before I actually run the auto repair wizard. Um, however, if I click my single select function, this is on the home tab, or you'll notice on the left hand side here we have our selection toolbar. This has a bunch of uh, very commonly used tools. I personally like to keep it on the left there, but you can move that wherever you wish. So let's click on single select. And if I kind of poke around in this file and highlight surfaces, I notice that I am um, uh, highlighting just single surfaces, and so in which case we need to actually run um, stitching uh, or light repair, as it's called, uh, which one of its operations is stitching. So in this case, let's just run the auto repair wizard. The first thing auto repair always wants to do is actually stitch together surfaces. So that's fine. Let's perform our recommended actions here. And in this case, we have a lot of open edges, unstitched edges. And uh, we have a, a particular case here where we get to use a lot of our Magic Surface tools, which we'll be getting to here. Let's click OK there. But on this top portion, um, we have to be careful of a certain region here and, uh, and just kind of uh, illustrate how Transmagic's uh, auto repair handles such cases. And so um, because we're actually going to build a surface here in the front manually, um, we're going to patch up these surfaces then after building that and then we need to unify the bottom portion and the top portion however before we do that we don't actually want to resolve this top case here um, these uh, cylindrical surfaces here otherwise Transmagic will get confused when we try to create a surface from uh, this edge into this edge, but uh, this will have more meaning in a second here. Um, one thing uh, tool that I'm using is very very handy is I'm using a space ball um, uh, or 3D connection device by uh, 3D connection. Um, Transmagic fully supports these. It's a very handy tool especially in repair operations. So first off though, let's uh, create this front surface and then stitch it into uh, this part. Let's go to our advanced tab and we're going to create uh, a linear edge. Notice how this is grayed out. This is common with all functions in Transmagic. Um, uh, the interface is, uh, is selection um, sensitive and so uh, in the case of this particular icon it doesn't highlight because we haven't created the right uh, number of selections and this is a vertex operation. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an edge from a vertex to a vertex and how we do that is we're going to set our filter selection to vertex and so um, if you click on the arrow button that single select or window select this little pull down menu allows you to set a different filter and in this case it's vertex level selection so we're going to do that and notice how when we do that the vertices in the file highlight uh, just to tie that back to another interface element go back to your view tab and notice how the vertices are in fact highlighted on this rendering group here um, vertices can be turned on and off. When you set your filter selection to vertex, it automatically turns those on. So what we do is we select one vertex from the left and hold control and select one vertex from the right. And uh, in this case we're going to create a linear edge between the two. We're going to repeat this operation, select one edge from there, or I'm sorry, one vertex here, hold control, select your other vertex, and when you have two vertices selected, the create linear edge uh, appears. And so in this case, our selection is done. Now we're going to change our selection to edge because we're going to actually uh, create a wire body frame from which we can hang our surface off. So let's change our filter selection to edge. 
uh, vertices stay highlighted I personally like to turn them off two ways to do that again go to the view tab turn the vertices off or you can right click and say show vertices so if you're on a different tab it's maybe not convenient to always go back to the view tab so you can right click and a lot of menu items are available via the right right click menu there especially commonly used ones so we are in edge selection mode so what we're going to do is select an edge hold control and select a chain of edges so I'm just going to go around here again holding control there we go so now I've selected this complete circuit you can uh, lift off of the control key now and notice how when we have edges selected we have a function that allows us to create a wire body in this case we need this if all of the edges were present um, in the model we could just use a magic surface to cover this but in this case we need to create a wire body first and so um, we have done that and now this is actually a single body notice as soon as you've um, created a wire body let's go to the home page or home tab rather and click assembly browser expand this open notice a, a new entity gets created in the assembly browser called a TM wire body um, we didn't look before but when we had created those edges they were called TM edges and so there were two of them the one across the top and one right here so you can go back and kind of look at that if you repeat this example they'll be TM edges and as soon as we create them use them to create a TM wire body they are consumed by the wire body and then the wire body is the only entity left Let's close that out and so what we're going to do here go to advanced again uh, let's change our filter selection back uh, well we want edge so no change is necessary we're on edge to cover a surface to create a surface on a wire body you just need to select any one of the edges on the surface body so here we have selected this edge let's hit cover uh, cover circuit and uh, there we go so now we've created a surface now what we need to do is stitch that into this bottom piece and for that we need to change our filter selection back to body and I've selected the main part held control selected this part and what I'm going to go to do is uh, click the home tab and click light repair in this case we're going to use light repair manually because we want to stitch it into um, stitch it into this piece here okay there we go and now we've uh, got some uh, other edges that we can use to cover up now you can go to a advanced and hit find selection and simply zoom into the ed edges but eventually um, you'll get there however there's a more simple procedure since we have so many open edges here still what we're going to do is again set our filter selection back to edge select on this bottom edge there and you only need to select one of these edges um, and click cover circuit notice as soon as you've selected one edge from an open circuit the cover current circuit button uh, highlights and so that's going to create that surface and since we are dealing with uh, in a circuit that belongs to this body we don't need to stitch the surface into the body it automatically happens we only need to stitch the surface into the body if we create an independent surface like we did uh, with the uh, hanging the surface off of the wireframe so we're going to do that again here we know we need to uh, uh, patch this surface here and uh, select a single edge and cover circuit uh, highlights there we go so let's uh, use our space ball now to rotate around so the next step we're going to do is we want to create a surface between this upper surface here and this cylindrical um, edge there the circular edge there however one thing we need to do is we're going to create it the wrong way first and this is just a trans magic behavior because this cylindrical these two cylindrical faces are attached to this lower piece of the body we actually are going to confuse trans magic and it's going to try and slice through the cylinder when we uh, perform this operation but we're going to do it once the wrong way and this gives me a good segue to tell you to turn on record whenever you're going to perform an operation that you really don't know how it's going to turn out this is what the record button is for this is going to record save states it's a little performance hit um, but it's going to allow you to very quickly roll back if you uh, mess something up like we're going to do now so our filter selection is still edge so that's good 
So what we do is we are going to select this edge here. Oh, I guess I didn't click the button. Select this edge here, and we're going to say set whole edge. This is going to tell Transmagic uh, to uh, delete this interior from the surface that we're going to cover here. So we're going to say select whole edge. So now Transmagic is going to be looking for that hole. Um, and now we're going to select an edge here and hit cover circuit. Now, what you would expect to happen is Transmagic creates that surface here, but be, again, because this cylinder was stitched to the bottom half, it actually confuses Transmagic, and notice how we've created these two split halves. And so, also notice that once we've changed the geometry, a record state is uh, recorded. And so, in this case, we want to say recall, go back to where we were, and we, we're going to unhook these cylindrical faces first to avoid this operation. So let's uh, change our filter selection here. Notice how I'm right clicking now instead of using the selection toolbar just to show you that it's there. We're going to say uh, select face. So we're going to select on this face, hold control, select that face. There we go. And we're going to remove these. We're going to actually physically remove them, turn them from stitched entities into independent solid bodies again. And so now that they're selected, right click, change and unhook faces. Now I'm going to go to filter selection and change my selection filter back to body. So notice how they're independent bodies. Now we can go and create the surface um, that we want to do here. So let's go filter selection edge again. Select our cylinder. Set whole edge. Select our outside edge that we want to uh, remove the hole from and cover this open circuit out here and click cover circuit. So now in this case notice we didn't uh, do anything to the cylinder because it was not actually stitched into that entity. It's not uh, attached to that body. So um, again a good reason to record in operations such as this. And now what we're going to do set our filter selection back to edge again single is we are going to stitch these uh, solids. Actually I'm going to go over here. Let's change our filter selection back to body again. Select all and stitch that surface back into uh, this part here. So now everything is stitched together except those interior small cylinders. If we click our uh, body Notice how we have the outer portion has been successfully stitched. This cover is here. And now we're going to create a surface on the top that removes all of these little cylindrical holes. Zoom in here. Actually, use my space ball to do that. Set our filter selection. Notice how on the home tab, I'm now going to set our filter selection using the uh, selection group that's on the home tab as well. Same thing in all cases. So let's first set our hole edges. You do not need to select every whole edge. You only need to select one edge from any circuit. Um, and I'm going to hold my control key down and add to my selection. And you'll want to be careful when you're doing this to get very close because if I go to my view tab, turn on wireframe, we can potentially select edges that are in the background there and that will uh, not allow the cover operation to work because it'll be illogical if one of these outside edges are selected. So sometimes it's best to select in wireframe mode. That's on view and here's all of our rendering options and uh, I'm in wireframe mode. There we go. And finally our center edge. Click the advanced tab set whole edge. Notice how now they all turn that uh, sort of uh, purplish blue color. I'm going to turn my rendering back on. And that is because they are now identified as whole edges or edges that are going to need to be subtracted from this outer surface that I'm going to create. So here's, uh, we're still on edge selection. Select the outer surface, cover circuit, and we have our holes and pockets. Now the auto repair wizard is our final step here. We always want to uh, run the auto repair wizard as soon as we're done with a repair operation. So we've covered, you know, we've covered all of the uh, holes up in this particular case. Go to isometric view here. We always want to run auto repair wizard because uh, it, the full repair operation and the light repair operation um, 
uh, will actually perform differently um, and additional uh, functions on a solid model than it will a surface model. And so since this is a new solid model, we need to check it for solid conditions such as topology errors and things like duplicate vertices and coincident control points and different things like that. So um, this actually uh, is a non-solid entity, so we need to run light repair on it to make sure it's solid. And now after we've done that, we get our green light, which uh, tells us that we have a nice valid solid. But let's do one additional thing here. Take a look and notice how um, we have split cylinders here. All of these cylinders um, are split. There's two halves here, two halves for each one of these small holes, two halves for the center hole. Um, a cylinder is, uh, is a type of analytic surface called a periodic, meaning um, its period is from 0 to 2 pi. Well, many CAD systems uh, prefer to split their periodics at 0 and 1 pi. However, many CAM systems, let's say this is going into a CAM system, prefer whole periodics. And so ACES and Parasolid, commonly used underneath uh, many CAM systems, both represent whole periodics. And one of the things that full repair will actually do is take a look at all of the surfaces and perform what's called a Boolean regularization. And that means taking two pieces of one analytic underlying surface and making the actual trim surface reflect um, a, a whole periodic. It could even be planes, though. Um, Boolean regularization applies to planes as well. Let's say this. Um, top surface was broken into uh, you know 50 small plane surfaces a boolean regular op operation will actually take those and combine them into one single plane too so let's just run full repair on this and notice how uh, when we do that all of the uh, edges um, are removed in those periodic cylinders and so that's one of the things that uh, um, uh, both actually full and light repair will perform on a solid. In fact, let's click our advanced tab and recall to our previous state. And so notice how we have our um, uh, edges there. You can also do the same thing with light repair. And uh, one of the things light repair does differently when the part is a solid, before it was a solid, it wouldn't do this. If it's a solid, is it will re uh, run this regular operation or regularization. And of course, same effect there. Um, the other thing that full repair will do is tighten up surface to surface intersections. So if we say show tolerant edges, um, we're fine. We have no gaps in this part anyway, so we don't really need to run full repair. If we did have some uh, tolerant edges, full repair would remove those and get those to zero, hopefully, if not, reduce the count. And uh, with that, I think we will conclude this demonstration. Thanks for watching.